Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome to Two Point Campus. This is a new business simulator that released earlier this month, developed by Two Point Studios, the same folks who brought us Two Point Hospital. Maybe you picked up a theme in the naming here. Two Point Hospital was another very popular business tycoon game in the healthcare industry that mostly set itself apart from other similar games through its humor. Well, Two Point Campus attempts to do the exact same thing, but this time with the university, mm, I hesitate to call it an industry, but I think you guys know exactly what I mean. We're going to be building up a university and attracting students to pursue the noble art of clowning around, or baking ungodly sized pastries, or becoming a world class spy. I've played this game for a couple of hours, finished out the first couple of scenarios, so I've got a pretty good feel for what this game has to offer, though I am still unlocking new features as I progress. So let's go ahead and jump into my academic empire, the School for Common Dandies, and see if we can continue the third scenario. And here we are in the campaign map. So far the campaign map appears to be more or less divided into different little scenarios where you'll complete different objectives to gain star ratings, and this will unlock additional content for other maps, or for sandbox mode, or at least unlock the next level. You kind of want to finish these out before you move on to the next one. Only takes about an hour to two hours or so for every scenario, at least thus far. So I finish out two of them. Let's go to Mitten University, a modern campus where I am going to be allowed to build up a new set of structures. Structures. Okay, so it looks like with Mitten University, we're going to be starting off with trying to build up a robotics-based campus. So far, every scenario has unlocked new majors for your students to pursue, starting off with Scientography and Virtual Reality, and then the second scenario, we had Cooking, which is actually the most normal of all of them so far, and then Learning to Become a Professional Clown. Now we're moving on to Robotics, and it looks like I'm going to start off with 10 students. No problem at all. Down here in the bottom, we're going to see that there is a tutorial lady. I'm going to ignore her because in the top right, we're going to have a checklist of things to do. And honestly, this is usually good enough. So starting with robotics, we need to get a lecture theater where we can teach students, uh, you know, in classic classroom style, then a robo construction lab. And finally, we need to hire a robotics teacher. Seems easy enough. In the bottom left, we can construct new rooms. So I'm going to start by building out a lecture theater, probably right over here. Doesn't need to be very big. I'm thinking a 6x6 six six is probably good enough, so let's go ahead and place that there. And then the top, you can see that there are different structures we need to place to complete the room. These are the bare minimum requirements. So we've got a lectern, which I can place in the middle, and then we need to place down some seating for our students, let's say right over here. And then, of course, I need a door to get into the room, obviously. That's all we need, technically. So I could just hit the check mark right now, and boom, we have our lecture theater. But there are so many more ways we can make this a little bit better. If I were to go over here and add extra items into the room, I've unlocked a few things that should help us a little bit. For example, we have an auto queue, which is basically just a teleprompter, which can boost up the learning power in the room, so our students gain experience a little bit faster. I'll place this over here close to the lectern because it thematically makes sense. By the way, this game is not very uh, clear in how you would rotate uh, structures or objects around. I had to look this one up. Maybe it was obvious in Two Point Hospital, but it's not obvious here. There's no hotkey. You simply click, hold, and then drag it around like so. All right, that's how this is supposed to work. Anyway, let's also place down a couple of surround sound speakers because that also is going to boost up the learning value. I'd like to place down at least a couple of leafy plants in a few directions just to kind of make this a more attractive room. We can see that the environment does go up a little bit as we do this, so we'll just place down a couple like so. And then I also want to boost up our hygiene with a simple hand sanitizer. We've learned the importance of hand sanitizer in the last couple years, haven't we? And then maybe also a quick little whiteboard over here. Not that it does a whole lot, but you can see that we are leveling up this room's prestige value by doing this. Prestige is just a way to kind of level up your campus, and the more prestigious you are, the more students want to come here and the more money I make. So it's not entirely altruistic. I'll also place down, let's say, a couple little inspiring posters about various different subjects like this, and boom, good enough for me. We can now hop out of this, and that is a perfectly serviceable lecture theater for the start of the game. Now I want to build out a Robo Construction Lab. If we look down over here, there's one right there. Robo Construction. Now, these labs usually uh, need to be pretty large, so let's start with something kind of like this, maybe a 6x7 to get us going. Yeah, I think that's fine. Let's go ahead and start there, place a door, let's say, down over here. Now, every lab is going to require some sort of gigantic overarching structure. In this case, the robotics project building right along over here. So we'll place this kind of right off in this direction, I think. Maybe something like this should be fine. Okay. 
And then I also need to place down a simple whiteboard, and that's going to finish out the room. How about this? Then we can hit OK, and I can add on more to it later if I need to. Every one of these same kinds of labs, uh, all robo construction labs, need to have the same starting structure. So if I have to build more than one of these rooms, and you often do, they start to get a little bit repetitive, unfortunately. But... Oh well, I think that'll be fine. So let's take a look at some other stuff we can add into the room, because there are some useful things, workstations in particular. So for example, we can have a desk where people can work on the robot's head. We can also have a 3D printer table. A table? Absolutely, that seems great. What about a systems desk? Sure, we'll do something like that. We could also toss in some spare parts somewhere here. That'll work fine. There's more. Uh, I'll come back to more of that later, probably. This should be okay, just to kind of get us started. Why do these workstations matter? It's not just for prestige, though that does certainly help a little bit. Uh, as your students go through their classes, they will receive assignments from their professors. They will attempt to complete these assignments to get their grades. If they cannot do so, they are at risk of failing the class. Uh, certain types of assignments require certain types of workstations. So it's nice sometimes to have a variety of different options to make sure you are future-proofing for your students. But if they don't have what they need, don't worry, they'll let you know. You just may not be able to do a lot about it. This should be more than enough to kind of get us started. Last thing to do is to hire up our first professor. In the bottom left, we can hire staff and choose somebody. Uh, this person happens to be boosted in research and in robotics. More expensive as a result, but I think Benedict Pickett is going to be a good choice for us. Let's go ahead and drop him over here. And bada boom, now we are ready to start the academic year. If we go ahead and click on this right here, we can see what courses we are offering. Robotics in this case, only level one. We can upgrade this later for more value. But that's all we've got, so let's go ahead and get started. In the bottom, you can see actually all the different calendar months in the game, and anything highlighted here are class times. So that's pretty helpful when you're trying to schedule events on campus, but we'll talk about more of that later. Now we need to upgrade the campus to level 3. That should be easy for us, because there are a few things I know that our students are going to need. They need rest and relaxation, they need recreation. That's kind of it, basically. So, for example, if we were to set up a dormitory, that would be a pretty good way for us to start. Let's go ahead and place one over here, maybe expand it out a little bit like this to fill out the rest of the space. Add in a quick door like so, and boom. That's going to be a dormitory, and we'll be able to create some space for our students to rest their little noggins getting ready for the next day. Also, maybe place down a couple of little uh, study desks over here, just because they might need it to study. There we go, I kind of like the look of this. Now we are going to start with 10 students, but believe it or not, they're more than happy to share beds. So more than five students are going to be living in this dormitory over here. So uh, don't worry if it looks a little bit sparse. Our, our students apparently aren't very picky or private, like, at all. Anyway, let's go ahead and place down a few little decorations. Once again, make sure we get some hand sanitizer so people are able to stay nice and clean. Maybe place down a rug or two. You guys probably like rugs. Let's do something kind of like this. ba ba boom And maybe a couple of little inspirational flags or something to kind of build up some school spirit and get that prestige value a little bit higher. And that should be good enough. Okay. Boom. We've got that ready to go. Looks very nice. Okay. Uh, other things that students are going to need, of course, would include such things as bathrooms. That's usually kind of important, so let's go ahead and build something out over here. Again, taking up some space. And maybe we'll place a door down over there. We need some bathroom stalls. I'll go ahead and rotate these around kind of like this, and we'll do something kind of like this. It's not the most efficient room I've ever created, but it looks kind of nice. Anyway, we also want to get a couple of sinks like so, plus we would like to get some sort of a hand dryer like that, maybe some sanitizer in case people want to stay hygienic, and also maybe a couple of little uh, posters on how to use a toilet, because you never know, your students might be stupid enough to forget. Anyway, we go ahead and uh, set that one up, all done, and I'd also like to place down a shower room so we can boost up our hygiene, if possible, so something like this will probably be good enough for me. Boop, 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 bada boop. Okay, so that takes care of most of the rest and hygiene needs for our students. They're also going to need some food, and vending machines are a pretty effective way of dealing with that, at least in the beginning of the game. So let's go ahead and set up some cheesy poofs and some soda, maybe a little trash can over here so that they don't feel like they need to litter. And that should be good to kind of get us started. I'll also place down a couple little benches in case people like to socialize, because that can make them a little bit happier as well. Okay, I think we have met everyone's needs to start off. We're just waiting for the first round of classes to begin. So here comes a bunch of our students. They're wearing weird cyborg gear and they're walking really silly. 
Wow, yeah, these students aren't gonna get bullied, like, at all, I am sure. We've also got, like, some people who apparently are extra dapper. There's also goths and, you know, kind of clowning around folks and stuff. You get lots of different personality types in college. We don't judge here. All right, we also need to build up a training room. Now, this is something relatively new for me, but we can use this to train up our staff to be more effective at mm, something. I, I don't really know what. I don't know if I actually want to place it over here. It's kind of making the hallway small, and for the aesthetic perspective, I don't much care for that. Where can I place down a nice little training room? We need to have some space. Um, 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 how about over here? Yeah, training room right over here, perfect, and then we'll have ourselves a door. And then this giant contraption, a training pod, which we can use in order to instill new skills into our workers. Yeah, we'll come back to that in just a second. Let me go ahead and build this room out. There we go, okay, this thing is set up. Now we need to hire some more staff. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a janitor because I know these students are going to make a mess. I went to college, I know how this goes. Somebody with good happy thoughts and extra happiness could be kind of nice. We could start with someone with a maintenance skill over here. Kind of like maintenance, that seems more useful, so let's go ahead and place this guy down. Now, we want to send this guy to go and learn something new, specifically mechanics. If I click on this structure and start some training, we can choose Melinda Husk, our janitor, and we can add on a new skill, specifically the mechanic skill for $1,000. It's going to take 30 days. No problem. Let's start the training. All right, hop in. Oh, my God, it's a giant overmind brain. Yeah, that's, that's how they learn. It's a little bit creepy. As I said, this game's all about humor and just kind of doing wacky things, so... You'll see stuff like this pretty much everywhere. It's um, it's a little upsetting, but it's okay. Anyway, we've now learned the mechanic skill. With the mechanic skill, our uh, tutorial guy is about to teach us that we can upgrade certain structures. So, for example, our robotics project can get extra learning power, 25%, if we're willing to spend another $10,000 and 41 days in order to get this sucker upgraded. That's what they want me to do, so I'll go ahead and do it. Oh, we can see a lecture's actually going on over here. Don't worry about your professors, by the way. They will really assign themselves to rooms based on what classes are going to be going on. If we click on the students over here, we can see this bar is gradually going up. So they are leveling up their understanding of their chosen major. The higher this is, the more um, likely that they are to graduate, and the more prestige comes to the university as a result. The more experience our students gain, actually, the more bonus money we get every month as well. So there's a direct financial incentive to make these guys as intelligent as possible. Oi! Oi! Dominic Sandwich! Wake up! Now the game wants me to build up something new here called a research lab, which we can place, let's say, over here, and still leave plenty of room in the halls. So I'm good with that, and then we'll place down a door over here. This is where you can conduct some special research that will allow you to unlock extra things for the rest of the scenario. So we'll place down the primary research hub, and then we need to get down, let's say, a little research desk, and maybe a research console for a little bit of extra research power. Bada boom, then let's also make this room attractive because that's very important. You want everyone to feel very happy and appreciated, and bada boom, this will do fine. All right, so we've got ourselves a research lab. Excellent. Now I believe the game is gonna tell me that I need to hire an extra professor because we're gonna have to conduct some research uh, yeah, we need to employ a second teacher. No problem, Stephanie Eames, you'll do fine. We'll go ahead and place you down over here, working in research. Then we're gonna click on the research hub, start a new project, and research a robotics bookcase for our library so that our students are gonna be able to finish out assignments. Like I said, they're gonna have these special workstations. They're also going to need a library with specific books in order to complete their assignments as well. Don't provide that, well, and your students are probably gonna fail. Ooh, what's going on over here in the robotics lab? Ooh, looks like they're gradually constructing little pieces of something over here. Uh, okay. Well, we'll come back to this thing. We might find that they're creating some sort of killer death robot. That could be exciting or terrifying, I'm not too sure which. I've built a little library over here, which is kind of important, again, for those assignments with lots of different workstations for textbooks or for computers or researching records, whatever it's going to be. And we did have to hire an assistant. These guys are like your part-time workers. They work in the library, they work at your kiosks, whatever it's going to be, this person will keep this under wraps. So that's all looking great. Now we just need to continue expanding out the university. We need a level 12 campus. We need si a level six robotic students, which basically means they have a lot of practice. And we want to complete more research projects. Well, we did finish with our bookcase. What else can we do? Uh, we can learn how to upgrade different things, such as our lectern or our research hub or training pod or whatever else. What's the general knowledge course exactly? I don't know, but it unlocks something. 
I guess this is something we could do to kind of give people like a more well-rounded education in the lecture halls? Mech, I always hated those filler classes. They don't do anything. Oh, now this is something new for me. It's freezing in here. I can't feel my elbows. All right, we need to place down radiators now in order to keep people warm. That's new for me. Okay, cool. Uh, well, we can definitely place down a few of these. Um, how about one right over here? Sure, that's gonna be fine. And ooh, this is kind of a nice little overlay. Right, well, that's gonna mean this map gets a little bit harder. Hooray! There we go, we'll place down a few kind of like this, and hopefully this deals with most stuff. I mean, yeah, people are gonna get cold walking down the halls, but where they're gonna spend most of their time in the rooms, they should be okay. At least I hope that's how it's gonna work. Yeah, they're currently building out a robot. They're 40% of the way through it. I have great suspicion as to what they're about to create and whether I'm gonna like it or not. Anyway, we've got ourselves a nice little student union building over here, or a room where they can just kind of relax and do a few different little activities and stuff, socialize a bit, that'll be nice. I've got a stu uh, staff room over here so my staff can retreat and get a little bit of rest and relaxation themselves. And also a private tutoring room over here. You know, just in case one of my students is a little bit dumber than the other and needs some help. I'm not, by the way, <laughs> that's not a dig on anyone who needs extra help. I took advantage of that myself in college. It's literally the way that it's portrayed in this game. Now in the bottom right over here, you're gonna see a few little notifications. Some of these are requests from your students asking for specific things. So for example, this person really wants a love bench placed somewhere. I mean, I can probably do that. Yeah, we'll go ahead and place an item somewhere. How about out over here? Nice and romantic, cool. Meeting some of their needs and stuff can result in you getting a little bit of extra money or prestige or something along those lines. This is my monthly income report, not looking great. And we are inviting the Minister of Ed Education to come over here and explore for level five students. If we have enough of them, we'll get some money and also a special little token over here. I don't remember their exact name, it's Kudosh. That's it. You use these to unlock a lot of different buildings and objects. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to go over to, let's say the robotics center, and we wanted to add some sort of item, we can see all the ones I've already got access to and what it would cost me in terms of money. But if I scroll down, here's a bunch of items I haven't unlocked yet. I'm gonna hold on to these points, but these translate between scenarios. It's kind of like a campaign map resource. And I want to spend them basically whenever a student has a need that I'm unable to meet, right? Worst thing that happens is when it turns out they need some sort of workstation, you don't have it, and you don't have enough kudosh points to buy it, right? That doesn't feel good for anyone, so I want to make sure we have that. Also note, by the way, that we would be uh, in the red right now as far as our profit, but the amount of experience we're imparting on our students is enough to keep me in the green for a bit longer, which is great. And the robot should be finishing up right about now. There's the arm. Oh man, it's beautiful! Oh god! And it's gone. Okay. Well, we finished with the robot. <laughs> build another one, I guess! <laughs> oh, they grow up so fast, don't they? You build a robot and all of a sudden it's just freaking gone into space, man. Okay, our first uh, academic year has come to an end. Let's go ahead and take a look at the awards and see what the statistics are. 10 students are continuing their education. They all passed their first year. No failures, no expulations, no dropouts. Is expulation even a word? It might be anyway. Uh, average exam results, 83%. Honestly, not too bad, I would say. We've generated some research points, which actually gets me a bit of extra money and kudosh. And we have a very attractive campus, so we get a little bit of extra goodies. All right, nice. This looks pretty good. Okay, so at this point with the academic year over, we are entering into the summer months. And this is my last opportunity to kind of go through here and start looking for things that I want to upgrade before the next round of students arrive. If we even want to wait that long. The game is telling me that I need to be building up a robo design room. How big does this need to be? Darn it. Just large enough that I'm not gonna be able to fit it anywhere that I like. Well, that just stinks. But all right, we'll go ahead and place one over here. Place down a door, let's say, how about right over here? And then what do we need to actually place down here? Some sort of a mega hand. Hmm, questionable. Okay, yeah, sure, why not? Mega hands. That's not gonna be a problem at all. And of course, we have plenty more workstations that we could place down if people need them. But I'm gonna try not to worry about that for now. Let's just start with something nice and cheap. I'm almost out of money. And that's kind of a problem. Let's take a look at our courses over here. We could add in some additional courses based on the other stuff I've already unlocked. And you can see there are a lot more to go. But I can't really afford all the extra equipment I need for another round of courses. So what I'm gonna do is spend some of my points just to upgrade this here for a higher maximum qualification level, extra students and more applicants. That way we just get a little bit more value out of robotics. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade this twice. Why not? 
Now there is one problem with upgrading as much as I just did, which I probably didn't think through enough. Uh, we need to place down another one of those Robo Construction Labs, which basically means a carbon copy of what I've already got here, which is unfortunate. Um, let's just ignore it for now. Yeah, I know, I know. We are we are probably gonna be getting some bad ratings because I need to be building this for the next 190 days. Uh oh. Yeah, we have some courses that are not gonna be getting filled out. That that could be a problem. But I don't have enough money. And if you guys don't give me money, what am I gonna do? Well, we made $20,000 in monthly profit, though. Hey, hold on. We actually might be okay. Never punished. Maybe we're gonna be able to build out another lab in time after all. Ah, but it's so dang big. Ah, ah, I hate it. All right, if I can't fit anything over here, then the only other option really is to build out another building. Um, we could build something over here, for example. $40,000 to construct the thing with the building already lined out here. I guess I'll go ahead and do that. This does take a little while for this to construct. Shouldn't take too long. Now I need to start stacking up enough money to set up one more of those rooms. Okay, so let's place down a robo construction room. Where do I actually want this? This room is kind of awkwardly shaped. Um, hmm, needs to be like six by six at a minimum, unfortunately. Uh, we could do something like this and just have the doors over here and this becomes part of the hallway. Sure, why not? And then we set up another one of these labs. And yeah, this is smaller than the other one, but the other one already has the workstations I need. This should be more than sufficient. So I'm gonna go with the absolute cheapest requirement in order to keep this a moving. All right. So yeah, like I said, for some reason, as you level up, you start needing more and more of these labs, but they start to get kind of redundant. You just kind of see the same things over and over again. And I think that's one of the little weaknesses of this game. I'd like a little bit more variety or at least give me like one large room that I keep upgrading, but multiple rooms are the same dang thing. That's just not quite as fun, you know what I mean? Ah, now here's something fun. Okay, so one of my students has a personal goal, and by the way, if they don't complete these personal goals, they get sad, but if they complete them, they're pretty happy, and that's usually a very good thing. Fraction Milk, amazing name, uh, wants us to organize a student lounge party. You can do that. All we have to do is set up some events, and there are a number we can play with. Uh, for example, if I click on the student lounge right over here directly, we can see that we can set up some events. Here's the party we're talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and schedule this. Everyone who attends is gonna get a movement speed boost and some happiness. It's gonna last for 15 days. So we'll do that, and then we can choose where we want to schedule this in the year. My advice, don't schedule it during classes or less people will be able to attend, which means you're wasting a bit of money. But this should be fine. So let's go ahead and book the event. And there we go, those are the parties I remember. Actually, this is way tamer than what I remember in college. Where's all the red solo cups? Oh, there's one. Okay, eh, there we go. Sure, they're just drinking a bunch of juice. Uh-huh, that's absolutely what they're doing over here. All right, well, good. These guys are all gonna be very, very happy. Awesome party for all the robotics nerds. Come on, do the robot. You know you want to. Outside over here, I'm gonna go ahead and place down a kiosk for some coffee, which does require we have an extra assistant ready to work. Uh, we'll go with this guy since he's a happy pupper, and I think he's gonna make people happy as they buy some coffee. There's other things we could place outside as well. It could be inside, but I mean, like, why, though? Outside is perfectly fine. Like, let's say a hot dog kiosk, you know? Do the exact same thing. Another way of people getting some hunger being met should be fine. Sure, we'll go ahead and do one of those as well. Another thing we could mess around with includes things like uh, campus clubs. So, for example, if I wanted to place, let's say, the speed walking club and just have a stand over here so that people can join a club, we can do that, so we'll place one over here. Assistance could help to uh, increase the hiring process, but I think people will go sign up for clubs all on their own. Yeah, you can see they're already starting to line up for this. Oh no, we already have an assistant too. All right, fine, fine, fine. I'll go ahead and hire another assistant. Actually, let's wait one day and see if this guy is any better. He's not, okay. Well, they're more expensive. I don't need better library people per se, but whatever, let's just go ahead and do this. Anyway, okay, so people are signing up for this, and this is gonna give them different perks. So for example, this person's now a speed walker, which means they just outright get 10% extra movement speed. And if we go to these clubs, we can actually place down special things like a speed walking sign. So let's say I place one of those, um, I don't know. How about right here? And members of the club can come over here and just activate this thing and it gets them even more speed and stuff. It's kind of nice. And thus ends another year for our campus. Excellent, let's take a look at the awards this time. What do we get? 30 people are continuing their education with an average exam of 83%. Overall, not bad. Get at least one more award, but we've missed out on quite a few others. Oh well, that's still worth a little bit of extra money. And now we can manage some new courses. Do we want to add another course into this? 
Yeah, sure, why not? How about uh, virtual normality? That sounds kind of fun. Funny business is a very easy one to add into your campus, but honestly, I don't see a lot of value. Virtual normality, on the other hand, kind of matches up pretty nicely with what we've already got going for the robots. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce one of these as a new course that we can take in our campus. That means, of course, I need to build up a VR lab. Also, our robo construction requires some maintenance, apparently. Not sure what's going on there, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Oh, my campus just leveled up to 12, which means we actually just finished with all of my objectives for the first star in the Mitten University, unlocking the next level, plus a few other things, like a computer lab. Internet history is a new course? Uh, that's, that's something I want people to study, are you sure? Also, book club stands and stuff, and we get some extra points and some money. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, what do we have to do next? We have to have people attend events. That should be easy. We're already getting above a B-plus grade average in robotics. I need people to fall in love. Well, that'll be great. And also, train a teacher to level five in robotics? Yikes, okay. Well, if I want people to fall in love, you know the best thing I can do is set up a romantic film day. When do we wanna have that? Let's say in mid-December so I know everyone's got time. Yup, lots and lots of sappy romantic movies to get people falling in love for some sort of corporate agenda. This sounds great. That's right, dumb college kids. Let the hormones flow through you. Is that a woman dating a crash dummy? Oh yeah, well that appeals to the nerds I think. Yeah, that works. And I finished training up a professor to level five, which means I finished my second star. We've now got access to some new events. Uh, honor rollers and sci-fi films. How exciting. What else do you want me to do? Upgrade 10 items. We're actually really close to that. And then all, all I need is some uh, A-grade robotics uh, graduates. That seems completely doable. In fact, I'm surprised we haven't done it already. At this point, we've now expanded to another building out over here. I even got to place down one track sport, some speed walking tracks for our club members over here. There are like actual sports in the game. I mean, they're not like real sports, mind you. I mean, we're talking things like cheese ball. What's cheese ball? I don't know, but it involves throwing cheese, which makes it sound like the perfect sport for me. Anyway, there's a lot of other things that we could be doing here. At this point though, I have almost everything taken care of. I'm kind of running out the clock just looking for some A-grade students to graduate, which should happen at the end of this year. And if we are running into a situation where happiness simply isn't good enough for a lot of our people, we can raise some salaries, and that sometimes, I think, can help boost up some happiness. So, if we need to, I'll just go ahead and give people a lot of uh, raises. It's not like I don't have plenty of money, am I right? <laughs> what did I just hear from the announcer lady? So if you don't know, there's somebody who's just like occasionally making announcements, and they're always kind of silly. Um, she just said something along the lines of, University gives you a bright opportunity. It's called debt. It's like, oh, that's just too real, dude. Is that even funny at this point, or is it funny because it's true? Almost at the end of the academic year here. Now, one thing that gets a little bit frustrating is we have a lot of people who are requesting various different things to continue their education, or else they're gonna fail their assignments. Which, first off, I just wanna say, if the professor is assigning them something they literally can't do here, well, that's just mean-spirited. But the big issue is you start running out of kudosh. There's just simply not enough to go around, let alone for all the trivial things that people want. So people are gonna start failing a few assignments, you just have to hope they are able to graduate nonetheless. Looks like enough did graduate, because now we're up to three stars. That means the Mitten University scenario is officially done. We could continue to play with this as much as we want to, or we could say we are done with this. Let's move on into the map, and we would start up the fourth. Oh, hey, look, cheese ball. We would start up the fourth scenario. Anyway, kudosh points, you know, you really have to be careful to make sure you earn those as aggressively as you can, and use whatever you think is going to be useful for future scenarios, not only your current scenario. Anyway, Noblestead appears to be the fourth option for us, but we're going to be ending things here, I believe. So that's Two Point Campus, guys. It's not a hard game, kind of like at all. I mean, we had a very brief touch-and-go moment of not enough money, and then we kind of overcame that no problem. And then we just started rolling in it, so we could place down pretty much whatever we want. There are parts of the game that can get a little bit repetitive, but generally speaking, it's a pretty fun little business tycoon. It's just not difficult. So if you're looking for something challenging, I'd say go for it. You'll have a couple laughs. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, I would ask that you hit that like button, leave a comment, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.